since we are all seated, we're going to stay seated. I guess I should introduce myself. If it looks like I'm looking over to the left, it's because I am. I'm blind, so I can't see the computer when, um, when it's over in front and this, the camera is facing me. So if it looks like I'm looking to, is that the right? The right, it's because I am. I'm looking at you guys, so I want to be able to see you. So go ahead and get seated. Hello, everyone. I'm so glad to have you here on this weighted yoga class. I like to call it high intensity um, yoga inspired fitness, I guess. We're going to come to a seated position, remove the flesh, make sure your sits bones are pressing into the mat. This is going to help you hopefully feel your mula bandha, that's the pelvic floor, lifting and squeezing. And go ahead, draw your Uddiyana bandha, that's your transverse abdominals, belly button to spine, draw it up. Notice how you sit up a little taller. Bring your shoulder blades down and away from the ears and reach the crown of the head up high. Try to keep that pelvic floor squeezing. It's going to want to keep letting go. Keep trying to squeeze it up. Every time you feel it let go, squeeze it up again. Catch your breath here. Thinking about that ujjayi breathing. We're going to do a simple side stretch. So take that right hand down to the mat. Left hand reaches up and over and feel a nice stretch along the left side of the body, warming up the body here. Keep the left sit bone pressing into the mat. See what happens if you can continue to squeeze the pelvic floor even here for one more. Coming on up. Let's do that on the other side. Left hand plants, right hand over. Squeeze the pelvic floor and then go over. Just so you know, I have the heaters on in here, guys. <laughs> oh. I know, right? Inhale, coming up. Let's take that right hand behind us, left hand to the side, gentle twist. Gazing over the right shoulder. Go easy on the twist um, if you have stuff going on. Oh, I finally got a pop. Good. Out. Other side. <coughs> Try to keep your spine straight here. If it's rounding, you're not getting all of the twisties opportunity. All right. Inhale. Coming back to center. Go ahead and reach up overhead. Take the hands, clasping them. Reach them up and see if you can go a little bit. So palms up, fingertips clasped reaching the hands up and back just a little bit, getting a nice stretch along the triceps, maybe even the chest. And then releasing here, roll the shoulders out. And then let's come on over and come to downward facing dog. No rest here. Go ahead, walk your dog out. I'm a lady on a mission today. Marsha, you're being really quiet. <laughs> I'm focusing. Oh, is that right? <laughs> Take those toes out, heels in, kind of come back to like a little froggy squat, down dog. And then moving forward and backwards, just moving through that range of motion in your hips. This is kind of an alternative to some of the other warm ups we typically do in yoga. If you feel popping, you can play with how your toes are pointing out or in. So it's warming up through the hips and the glutes and the shoulders. Do a couple more. And then when you're ready, come to stillness. Oh, press those chest through, back towards the thighs. A little bit more stretchy warmings up as we roll out to a high plank. We love planks. Yes, we do. We love planks. How about you? Booties down. Puffing up that space between the shoulder blades. Warming up the core. Warming up the body. Pressing down between the thumbs and the pointer finger. For three, two, one. Downward facing dog. One more. 
Inhale, let's come back to plank. We're gonna play with some core exercises to warm us up. I don't know if you guys could tell, but I opened up my feet a little wider than I normally would have for a plank. That's gonna to help to bring you some more stability. We're gonna take that right hand to the left shoulder, tap it, set it down. Left hand to the right shoulder, tap it, set it down. Try not to move the booty. Try to hit each shoulder 10 times. The booty stays as still as possible. Feel those shoulder muscles. I'm on seven. Got two more. Downward facing dog. You guys starting to feel the burn? Nice little warm up. All right, let's continue on with this idea of warming up the upper body. Take the forearm, right forearm down to the mat. Left forearm down to the mat. Hello, dolphin pose. And we're gonna do 10 dolphin push-ups. Y'all remember what that is? Nose to thumbs for 10. Nine, belly in. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Hold it down here for five, four, three, two, one. Push it back. Come back to your plank on your forearms, holding that plank on your forearms for another five, four. I love the cat view, Cynthia. Three, two, one. Come all the way down to your belly. Hallelujah. Take your arms out wide to a T. Oh, enjoy this nice little stretch on your chest. And now we're gonna take those hands behind your back, clasping them like we did at the beginning with seated and pull your hands towards your heels as you lift your chest up. So this is a heart opener and a back body builder. If you want, you can lift your feet and we're gonna hold it here for five, four, three, Two, one, set it down. Arms out wide to a T, forehead to the mat. Now we're gonna work the traps. That's the upper back. Take your hands to a little bitty diamond. Make your thumb and pointer finger a diamond. It's gonna plant just on top, on, on top of your head. Forehead plants into the mat. And what we're gonna do, keep your forehead on the mat. That's gonna disengage the upper traps and we're gonna focus on the lower traps. We're gonna raise and lower our arms trying to keep everything in one line. So forehead to the mat, raise and lower the arms and hold for three, two, one, set it down. Let's try it again. Did you, could you guys see the motion that I was going for? Forehead no. down, arms raising. We're trying to squeeze where the bra would be and below where the shoulder blades are. And squeeze it for five, four, three, two, one, set it down. Now we can go right back to that exact same exercise or we can make it dynamic. Keep in mind, you can always lift your legs for these exercises that gets your booty and your hamstrings involved a little bit more. So option number one, we just raise the arms. Option number two, we raise the arms, pull them down and back. Forward, back, forward, that's three, four, really squeeze, five, six, seven, eight, two more, nine, 10, hold them back. Now raise your head, lift everything for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Drop it all down when she'll wipe those legs for a breath or two. Then we're gonna plug the toes in, engage the quads so much, those thighs come up off the mat. Squeeze the elbows together. One long line of energy, push yourself up. Downward facing dog. Oh yeah, all right. Go ahead, take that right foot, bring it forward to the front of the mat, drop that left knee down. Nice little left hip flexor stretch just for a moment. If you want, you can leave your hands down or you can raise your hands up. Getting a nice good stretch here with those hips for another three, 
two, one. Now, straightening the right leg ever so slightly. Plug those left toes in a lot. Squeeze your booty and your pelvic floor as we lift ourselves into crescent lunge. All right, first set, no weights. Let's dip it down for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold it here. Five, four, three, two, one. Take that left foot up to meet right. Join me in chair. Yeah, those legs are on fire. For three, two, one. Take that right foot back, right knee down. Enjoy this nice right hip flexor stretch. Ooh. This is always my tighter side. All right, plug the toes in, squeeze the glutes. That's gonna help you to lift up. And we got eight of these. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. What did we do? Did we hover? I think we hovered a little bit for five, four, three, two, one. Back to chair at the top. Holding it here for five, four, three, two, one. Forward fold. First forward fold of the day. Take those feet out, hips width distance apart. Maybe you sway. Hello, yoga class. All right. If you have weights, make sure you've got them close to where you can grab them. We're going to do some bicep stuff today. There's actually multiple biceps. There's not just one muscle. There's like different names on them, which is why we like to, if you see people doing curls, they do all sorts of variations of it. So we're gonna inhale halfway lift, exhale, plant your hands, move through your vinyasa. That's this high plank, low plank action, or you can just go straight to down dog. So what we're gonna do is in a lunge position, Practice some of our bicep work. So inhaling, bring that right foot forward. You can always leave that left knee down, always an option. Grabbing your weights or your canned goods or your water bottle. Come to your crescent lunge. So the first bite, we're going to do a set of three. I'm going to face you guys so you can see it. One set is going to have three different exercises. The first one, your arms go out straight. Second one, they go out wide. Third one, they come in. And that equals one. Let's try to go for eight. So up, out, in. That's two. Up, out, in. That's three. Up, out, whoo, in. That's four. Five, good job. Six, seven, last one. Good job. Go ahead. Actually, let's keep our weights. Step that left foot forward, come into chair. Take the arms out and hold them for a static hold for five, four, Three, two, one. Left foot back. I mean, right foot back. Crescent lunge on the left. Going straight for it. You ready? Arms, we want to be burning. So curl them up. Curl them out. Curl them in. That's one. Here's a two. That's three. I'm dropping a weight. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Hallelujah. Come back to your chair. Now, if you held your arms out, palms up the last time, hold them palm down this time. Or if you held them up, palms down last time, hold them up, palms up. 
for three, two, one, forward fold, hallelujah. How are your arms feeling? Great. Sweet. Enjoy this forward fold. Okay, now we're gonna, that was just bicep work, right? Now we're gonna get some triceps in. Take your feet back, move through your vinyasa, or just go straight to down dog. Now, you wanna have your weights. We'll do one side at a time, because it's kind of hard to transition between sides, especially if you're using creative weights. So you can be on your plank on your knees, or you can just be in a full plank. Holding your hips steady, you're gonna take your arm back, um, excuse me, row it up, then extend out, and then go back down. So that's one. So it's up, out, back, down, that's one. Let's go for 10. Up, back, in, that's two. Three, four, five, booties down, my booty was up. Y'all can yell at me, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, hallelujah. Come to your knees if you want, I am. And let's get ready for the other side. We love this, right? Okay, so again, grabbing those weights, remember to do enough to where you are exhausted at the end of one set, okay? Because we don't do this a ton. Let's come back to our plank. Remember, you can be on your knees, lift the arms up, back, in, and down. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Dropping the weights, coming back to plank. All right, let's see if we can do one more set, five shoulder taps. Tap those right and left shoulders five times. That's one. That's two, three, four, five. Downward facing dog. Your biceps and triceps talking, I hope, because mine are. Catch your breath. You're technically supposed to wait at least a minute between sets for maximum muscle growth, but we don't have that long. So we're gonna move right into our warrior one, right foot forward, left heel plants. Grab your weights and we're gonna do more triceps. So we're gonna make this be a big combo move. We're gonna do bicep curl, shoulder press, tricep extension, that's one. Come back down. We could actually make it an exercise on the way down, but we'll skip that part. Bicep curl, shoulder press, tricep extension. That's two. Bicep curl, shoulder press, tricep extension. Three, four, five, six. Seven, and eight. I think we can do two more. And nine, and 10. Cynthia asked for upper body, she got it. Plant your hands, move through your vinyasa. Is this okay, Cynthia? She's muted, so I can't hear if she's cussing. Let's do that on the other side. Left foot forward, right heel plant. Second set, we got this. Warrior one, curl, press, extension, come back down. That's one, we got eight, two, three, and four. Halfway there, that's five. Here's six, I think. And seven. 
and eight. Holy moly, drop the weights. Take your vinyasa. Those vinyasas are hard. Oh. Catch your breath. I got one person in child's pose. All right, let's give our upper bodies a little bitty break here and focus on the lower bodies. So inhale and look between those hands. On the exhale, we'll jump into a malasana squat. So squats are like hands down the best booty exercise you can do. I have a problem with my hips if I do the full expression of a squat. It makes my hip hurt. The full expression of a squat is coming from standing all the way down to below parallel. I can't do that because it hurts my hips. But what I can do is hold the squat. So you can use weights or not. I'm just gonna grab the five pounders and come to your full expression of your squat. Your toes are out slightly, heels are in slightly. Hands are, I'm gonna have them in between my legs. Holding it here for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Come all the way up. Now we're gonna do, if you can do the full squat, go for it. I'm gonna do like a half squat. We're gonna go for eight. That was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nice, bring your feet together, drop in those weights, get up. Now we're gonna work a little bit of standing core before we do balance. I'm having cord issues. Ground down a whole bunch through that left, that right foot. We're gonna pick up that left knee. See how high you can get the left knee. Use your core and your left hip flexor. Now we're gonna tap it down for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Set it down. Do you feel that in the hip flexor and in the lower core? That's kind of one of those important parts for your uh, balance. It's booty and core. Let's do that on the other side. Ground down a left through the left foot, a lot through the left foot. Picking up the right knee. See how high you can get it. Each time we raise it, we're gonna raise, see if we can get the knee every bit as high. Lower it for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Set it down. Now let's balance. Our core is nice and engaged. The booties are strong because we've just done balance. Ground down a whole bunch through that right foot. Pick up that right knee. See how high you can get it without using your hands. Channel your inner karate kid crane pose. Right? We feel it. We are Mr. Miyagi. Now, take that left foot out to the side. I think we did this last week. Holding it here for three. This you should feel in your right butt cheek. Two, one. Bring that left foot back. Holding it here. Now we're going to shift through to airplane pose. Keep in mind, you can always bring your hands down to the mat. Shift that left foot back. Come to your airplane pose. Try to get your body level to the ground. Holding it here for five. You feel this in your bottom? Four, three, two, one. Coming back up. Come to standing. Shake it out. We're going to do that on the other side. Then we'll add some weights. All right, so ground down a whole bunch through that left foot. We're gonna pick up that right knee, get it up as high as you can. Here we are, Daniel son. Foot is active. Feel this in your core, not just in your hip flexor as you open up to the side. Feel that working in your obliques. You can bring your hand there and like flex your obliques to see if you can feel it. This is my harder side. All right, come back forward. Now go to your airplane pose. Remember, you can always take your hands down to the mat for stability. Hands off of the mat, totally okay. Hold in your airplane. 
Checking in, checking in with your hips. Try to get them square. Feel your left butt cheek talking to you. Holding it for another three, two, one. Go ahead, set that foot down, shake it out. Now we're gonna practice what's called single leg deadlifts. You don't have to use weights, but you can. If you're gonna use weights, you've gotta balance, right? Because you're on one single leg. Guys, this is working your bottom and your hamstring, which is strong. So don't be afraid of your weights. You can, if you want, we're gonna come into warrior three on the right. And then what you do with your weights on the ground, right knee slightly bent, you raise and lower to parallel. If balance is saying not today, come to your pyramid posture. So it's almost like you're on your toes and you leave that left foot grounded. Same exercise. Make sense? Let's try to go for 10 because none of us are carrying like 100 pounds, right? Let's see if we can do 10. One, two. Good job, Cindy. Good, Marsha. Three. So it's not your arms bending, Marsha. It's your body's moving up and down. Oh, okay. Six. You're making it harder. Seven. But it did give me an idea. Let's just go eight. I think I said 10. I'm just doing eight. What Marsha was doing was gonna make it be like a row and then back all on one leg. Kudos to you, maybe next week. Shake it out. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not feeling that today. Marsha. Let's, let's do that on the other side. Your legs feeling okay? Did y'all feel that in your bottom, the standing yes. leg? Yeah. <clears throat> let's come into our airplane pose on the left or our pyramid pose on the left. Most important thing is the front leg is mostly straight. It's got a little bit of a bend to protect the knee and encourage the bottom to do the work, not the back. So if you can do this balancing, that right foot is off the ground, you just raise and lower your torso, feeling the bottom squeeze. If balance is saying, not today, plant those right toes and do the same thing. What? I think we did eight, didn't we? I can't remember. Yes, eight. All right, after eight, shake it out. So let's do, move one through, one more round of flow without the weights to see if it's easier to get your airplane pose now that the bottom is nice and fired up. So grounding down a whole bunch through that right foot. Go ahead, pick up the left knee or the left big toe. Full expression of Utita Hasapati Mustasana. Standing head to big toe. Now, since we've got the aid of our hand on our foot and our knee, open up to the side. See if you feel the difference. Balance is so stinking hard, and I think it's a full moon which plays with it. Come back to the front. Now we're going to let go of that foot and hold it up there with our core for five, four, three, Two, good, Betsy. One, bend the knee, shift it back into your airplane pose. Here we hold this for five, four, three, two, one. Plant your hands. Let's do five little curtsy lunges to really seal off the bottom. Bend the left knee, left heel towards your butt cheeks. Left knee behind right knee and curtsy it down for five, four, three, two, one, extend that left leg up towards the sky. Go ahead, drop it down at the back of the mat. Enjoy a nice stretch for your pyramid pose. Active recovery here. I'm gonna switch sides and have my weight so that I'm opening up to you guys. Okay. We're gonna bend that right knee ever so slightly with or without weights. We're gonna windmill ourselves up, come to our very first warrior two. If you've got your weights, hold your weights out, palms up. This is working shoulders and biceps. Now, leaving your biceps completely parallel to the mat, bring the arms up, down. That's one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Extend them out long. Bring the arms out in front. Keep your belly in. Shoulders are strong. Curl them up for five, four. Actually, let's make it eight. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Beautiful. Straighten the right leg. Turn the toes towards the front. Cross Arita Padatanasana. Separate leg stretching. Little bitty break for the legs and for the arms. If you want to do your headstand, now would be a good time to do it. If you're feeling super, super froggy, maybe you walk your hands out or your feet back and let's do 10 GI Jane push ups uh -oh. or five. <clears throat> and after you're doing your exercise of choice, meet me back here in that separate leg stretching. I'm gonna turn my toes towards the left, bringing my weights with me so we can enjoy the same warrior two on the other side, minus a vinyasa because I want you guys to like me. Windmill yourself up, warrior two on the left. This time we're gonna have palms down. Feel the difference. This is working your deltoids in a slightly different way. Now when we bend the elbows, the weights come in. Try to keep your arms even, out. If this hurts the shoulders, drop the weights. We're gonna go for eight, four, five, six, seven, eight. Extend them out, bring them in front. Now we're gonna lower, raise to parallel for eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one. Say a little prayer that those are done. Turn the left toes towards the center, dropping everything back down to the stretch. <clears throat> Catch your breath here. Now the next exercise is going to be working those like angel, um, angel wings, basically kind of like in between your shoulder blades, those butterfly muscles. You can do this with or without weights. I'll demonstrate it without weights first, then I'll show you with weights. I'm gonna have my toes slightly out, heels slightly in, bend the knees without weights. Elbows stay bent, lift and squeeze, lift and squeeze. You should feel this in between your shoulder blades. With weights, you don't need much weight here. Same action. Two, let's go for eight. If you've not got any weight, you can do more. Bellies in. Six, seven, eight. Set it down. Did you all feel that between the shoulder blades? Yes. Okay, good. That helps with posture. Help you stand up straighter. Anytime you're standing up straighter, you look a little bit leaner. Toes out a little bit more, heels in a little bit. With or without weights, join me in a goddess squat. Back to the booties. So if you've got weights or water bottles, depending on your range of motion in your hips, try to touch them. But notice how it was my chest that went down, not my legs, that was naughty. So go down really low for your goblet squat or got a squat in this place. We're gonna go for 10. See how I'm limited, I can't go down anymore. Everybody's range of motion is different. Keep the back straight, belly's in. What number are we on guys? 13. Good, let's do another 12. <laughs> All right, when you are done, hold it down here low for five, four, three, two and a half, two. Come up to your heel, off of your heels for five, four, sink low, three, two, one. Drop the heels, stand up. Hallelujah. Last prosarita, separate leg stretching. I love this because I have open hamstrings. If you do not love, if you don't have open hamstrings, you may not love this stretch. Sorry. Recover however you feel you deem sufficient. 
Let's do one more set of those back exercises, flies, reverse flies. So you don't have to have weights for these and you still get the benefit of the movement. In fact, it's safer, especially if you're overcoming a shoulder injury without weights, just to get your body used to that range of motion. Heels out, I mean, heels in, toes out slightly. Bend your knees to make your bottom work and your core work. Lift your chest to be parallel to the mat. Let's fly this out for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hallelujah. Drop the weights, turn towards the front of your mat, and let's flush this out with a vinyasa. We haven't even done a single extended side angle. We got to rectify this. It is, after all, yoga. <clears throat> Catching your breath. Y'all feeling okay? Yep. Okay. Let's take that right foot up towards the sky. Bend the right knee, stretching out that right side body. Hmm. And then let's straighten the right leg, bring the right knee to your nose, give it a kiss. Mwah. Set that right foot down at the front of the mat. Left heel plants, let's come to a warrior one. This should feel like your light as air, no weights. I'm gonna turn and face the other way so y'all can see me. All right, open up, warrior two. Now we've got some options here. Let's move through our peaceful warrior with a big bent right knee. And if you love the more flowy movements, move to your extended side angle, right elbow to that right knee. Left arm can be reaching forward or you can hold the bind. You can stay here and hold this extended side angle or you can move forward and backwards between extended side angle and peaceful, linking everything with your breath. We'll be here another two breaths. One breath. Coming back to peaceful. Straightening that right leg. Feel a super awesome stretch on that right side body. Then come to your triangle pose. Keep that right knee soft. Don't let it lock out. Gaze is towards those left fingertips if that's okay with your neck. If it's not, you can look down at the right big toe. Enjoying this stretch now, you should feel it right hammy, as well as maybe even in the left side for another three, two, one. Take that left hand down to the mat. Take, come up to the toes of that left foot. You can come down to the left knee if you want. I'm gonna meet everybody in a side plank. Maybe you're holding on to your toe. Holding this side plank for five, four, three, two, one. Right hand to the mat. Maybe the right foot stays off the mat as you come to your chaturanga push up. Push back up. Let's do two more chaturanga push ups. One, two, downward facing dog. Hallelujah. Now we get to do that on the other side. So that was a sneaky way to get some core work in, wasn't it? Because we love core. All right, one more breath. Take that left foot up towards the sky. Bend the left knee, reach that left heel for the right shoulder. As we keep that right shoulder square. Did I say left knee? I meant left heel rather, sorry, Marsha. All right, straighten in that left leg, bring that left knee to your nose, give it a kiss. Mwah. Set it down, coming into your warrior one on the left. Keep breathing. Let's open up warrior two. Use this time with the camera in front of you to check out your form. See if your left leg is really bent. See if your hips are open. Hands reaching an opposite direction, arm parallel to the mat. Now we've got those options. We're going to move through our uh, 
revolved. Oh, what is this? Peaceful warrior. Use your words, Jennifer. And then if you love the movement, maybe you move between extended side angle and peaceful. If you like the long static holds, come to your extended side angle and hold it here. Whichever one you're doing, make sure you're breathing. I'm going to do two more breaths. Coming back to your peaceful. Straightening that left leg, reach that left hand in the opposite of the foot, and then come into your triangle pose. Endeavoring, as always, to keep a softening, softness in that left knee. The longer you practice, the more open your body becomes, which is nice in several ways, but sometimes it can be get too open, and that can be damaging to the joints. So keep the left knee slightly softened, especially if you can hyperextend it. Work in that left hip under the right. Go ahead, windmill that right hand down to the mat. You can come down to the right knee if you'd like, or you can stay up on the toes of the right foot. We're gonna try to transition through that side plank. That right knee being down is a really great way to train yourself to pick up your left foot if you're working on that exercise. It helps you to figure out how to make your body do what you want it to do. And after a while, you just lift it. Two. Releasing the toe if you have it, plant that left leg down. Let's do chaturanga push-ups for three. Two, one. Good job, downward facing dog. We're gonna look between the hands, walk, step, jump through to a seated position. <coughs> Excuse me. It's sinuses, not anything worse. Yeah. <laughs> I hate coughing this time. Like this, it's like everybody looks at you funny. I'm like, I swear it's sinuses and I have a hair in my mouth. All right, coming to a seated position, remove the flesh. Let's enjoy a nice seated forward fold for a moment before we go back to our core work because we love the core work. Is there any place that you guys didn't get worked on that you want worked on really fast? I got one shaked head, so that's good. Shaking head, one head shaking. I don't know the right English for that. I don't talk too good. Okay. Coming on up here. Now, let's us come all the, let's do reverse tabletop first. We're gonna get a heart opener in. Reverse, bring your fingertips facing your uh, <coughs> bottom. Your knees can be bent, hips, uh, feet or hips width distance apart. Rotate the shoulders forward to create a nice little shelf for your head. And then lift your, your butt cheeks up. Squeeze the bottom. And we're going to hold it here for five, four. Beautiful. Lift the hips. Three, two, one. Set it down. Extend those legs out long. Go ahead and lay all the way back. Long body stretch. <coughs> Now take the hands back down to your side, tilt the tailbone down a whole bunch. See if you can get your low back onto the mat. I'm gonna bend my left knee and bring my left foot to the mat because apparently my belly cannot hold my back down to the mat today. I'm gonna to raise and lower the right leg for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, switch side. Don't let the low back come up off the mat. Raise and lower for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Plant the left foot. 
Now we're gonna come out and instead of doing circles, I thought it would be kind of fun to do scissors. So have your, extend both legs out, only as low as you can keep the whole low back on the mat. So if your feet are straight up in the air, so be it. So that's how you get from working just your low back to incorporating the transverse and upper abs. If you want, your head can be staying on the mat or you can lift your shoulders. So lowering the legs only as much as you can keep the whole low back on the mat. Your shoulders may or may not be lifted. Let's open it for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, eight more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bring those knees into your chest. Give them a squeeze. Hallelujah. Oh. All right. Let's do one more set of little core work, and then we'll move to uh, heart openers and back bends. All right. So we're going to do bicycle movements, but it's not just like swinging them out like this. This is like channeling our inner Pilates a little bit. Pilates and boat pose. So your shoulders can stay down on the mat. If you want to get the upper core involved, raise the shoulders up. Now we're going to have the shins parallel to the mat. You can use your camera to check in on that. If you want, you can have weights holding your weights overhead directly. I guess I should demonstrate that. Now we're going to go left leg out straight, then right. Left Right, keep the whole low back on the mat. Here's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let's see if we can do twenty, thirteen, fourteen. Why did I say that? Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20. Holy moly. Bring everything down. Give it a squeeze. <sighs> all right. So before I just let you all go to enjoy your back bends, let's channel our 1984 Jane Fonda Buns of Steel video <laughs> with some glute bridges. You can put your weights on your hips if you want to add weight. So it just kind of stays in the low back, I mean in the low belly rather. Make sure you can grab your fingers, can grab those heels. Lift the, the hips and hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Set it down. Now we're going to raise and lower for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, bring the hips down. This time we're gonna have heels in, toes out, like we would be setting up for Malasana. We're kind of pretending to be little froggies. With or without weights on your bellies, let's raise the hips and hold for five, four, three, two, one. Now we're gonna dip it down for eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one. Hold it up here for eight, seven, six. Holy crackers. Four, three, two, one. Set it down. Hallelujah. Oh, give yourself a squeeze. All right. Yogi's choice. If you want to move straight into the back bends, let's do two back bends. You can hold a bridge, you can hold a wheel. If you want to keep it glute oriented, like really more like glute strengthening. You can practice a glute bridge where you raise and hold one leg up, or you can do like the scissor action that we did with the core while you're in a glute bridge. I'll demonstrate that one. I'll try to do eight on each side. We will see. So here I am in my glute bridge, lifting the left leg, go out to the side for eight, seven. You don't have to do this. <laughs> I want to make sure you guys feel like you get your enough yoga in, not all weights. So 
the point of doing the glute bridges with the legs out to the side is it really isolates the um, rounded leg butt cheek and it helps to, you to build your um, the, the you have a glute max and you have a glute min and you got all these other muscles in your butt right the what happens especially as we age and we sit not all the muscles fire they start to atrophy and what happens with that is your hips become unstable which leads to instability not just in your body but um it, it impacts your ability to balance that's why it's really good to work on your bottom um, butt muscles and not just the glute max the big one we want to work on all the little ones because that's helping you to um, keep your hips stable so your proprioception will continue to improve even with age does that make sense yeah. sounded really techy but i didn't want First it to all, all right so let's come into an inversion of your choice i didn't give you guys very many options to go upside down so if you're dying to do a crow pose you can if you don't want to do a crow pose or a headstand, another option is to just do a shoulder stand. We, what we want to do is get our feet above our head somehow. Um, you can also do a child's pose. That's also an inversion. Another really great option that I love is just bring those legs straight up in the air. That helps to flush all the lactic acid that's been building up as we stand when we be standing it gets it closer to our heart so hopefully the heart will pump out all of the crap that lactic acid that built up and flush our body with good <clears throat> lactic acid free blood you can also do a shoulder stand nice marcia I like that feet up After your inversion, make sure you spend a little bit of time either in child's pose or happy baby, something to get the body to uh, come back to normal. And we didn't do a ton of twisting in today's class. We have a couple of minutes here. So if you would like to, option number one, we can bring the knees into the chest, let them fall heavy over towards the right. If twisting is not your jam today, bring that right foot over the left and do a supine pigeon. This is gonna help to stretch out the booty that we worked a lot of. Maybe you wanna do a little bit of both twi pigeon and twist so you can do your pigeon and then twist it over to the left if the right foot's bent, Yogi's choice. Twist can be really great to aid in digestion, but it can also lead to indigestion if you've eaten recently. If you have twisted to one side or pigeoned to one side, now would be a good time to change it. I don't want you guys to be late for Stephanie. <coughs> I think Stephanie in her Pilates class is going to start bringing some upper body stuff too because we had some requests. So we like to oblige all requests. This pigeon twist has quickly become one of my favorites because it helps to get a little bit mm, more on the outside of the bent, I guess both legs, the pigeoned leg. 
in a spot that apparently needs to be stretched for me. Couple more breaths here. When you're ready, you're gonna roll out of this twist, maybe give both knees a squeeze, and then come into your final resting pose, however you deem it. Slowly start to wiggle those fingers and toes. Bring in some life back. With heavy eyes, you'll come up to a comfortable seated position. Thank you so much for joining me today in this weighted yoga class. I hope you guys had fun. I hope you got to build a little sweat. I can't see sweat, so as far as I'm concerned, you didn't work hard enough. We're wringing wet. We sweat. 